In this video, you're going to learn how to install a valid SSL certificate on an Alma Linux system running the Nginx web server. By the way, these instructions also work for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS, and Rocky Linux. The SSL certificate you'll install will be issued by Let's Encrypt entirely for free. Traditionally, you've had to pay for SSL certificates and renew them every year, incurring additional costs. With Let's Encrypt, that's all changed. Before you start configuring your Linux server, I want to give you some important background information. This won't be long, just about a minute or so. Now, as a quick reminder, SSL stands for Secure Sockets Layer, and it allows for encrypted communications between a user's web browser and a web server. It's important to use SSL anytime sensitive data is going to be transmitted, such as credit card numbers, personal information, and authentication credentials, such as passwords. Even if your web server is not handling sensitive information, using SSL can enhance the trust of visitors to your site. Some web browsers will warn users that the site is not secure unless it's using a valid SSL certificate. Also, search engines such as Google rank SSL-enabled websites higher in search results, so there's an SEO or search engine optimization benefit as well. This video makes a couple of assumptions. The first one is that your Linux system is running Alma Linux, Rocky Linux, CentOS, or Red Hat Enterprise Linux. The second assumption is that your system is accessible over the public internet. The last assumption is that you have a valid DNS entry that points to your Linux system. For example, if your domain is www.example.com, when someone types in that domain in the web browser, they are actually connecting to your Linux server. I've included some additional information about the DNS configuration that you'll need in the project notes and documentation. So if you need additional help, look there. All throughout this video, I'm going to be using demo.linuxtrainingacademy.com. Even though this domain is going to be used in every example, be sure to use your domain when you're following along. The first thing you need to do is to connect to your Linux server. I'm on my Mac laptop, so I'm going to open up the terminal application and simply SSH into my server. Use whatever method you normally use to access your Linux system. If you connect to your server as a non-root user, be sure and switch to the root user because most of the commands that you'll be executing during this tutorial require root or super user privileges. As you can see here on the screen by my prompt, I'm logged in with my JSON account, so I'm going to switch to the root account by typing su, space, hyphen, and pressing enter. Now I'm going to enter the root password for my server. Let's start off by updating the installed packages to their latest versions available in the repository. We'll do that with dnf update y. The dash Y option answers yes to any questions DNF might ask. This way, we don't have to manually type Y and hit enter for each question. Now let's install the Nginx web server with DNF install dash Y Nginx. We need to make a small configuration change to the Nginx web server. So we're going to need to edit Etsy Nginx Nginx.conf. I'm going to use the nano editor here for demonstration purposes, but of course, use any editor that you're familiar with and comfortable with. For example, VI or Emacs would be great choices as well. What we're looking for is a line called server underscore name. So we need to replace this underscore with our domain name and save your changes. You can check to see if you made any typing mistakes by typing nginx space dash T and that'll check the configuration. Okay, it says the syntax is okay. We want to ensure that the web server starts on boot, so we need to enable it. Also, we want it to start right now, so we'll use the dash dash now option. Finally, we'll provide the service name, which is Nginx, and press enter. One way to check that the web server started is to use the systemctl status command. And sure enough, it says it's active and running, and it lists the processes that are associated with the Nginx service. I'll type Q to quit the pager. And by the way, you can also use the is-active option to systemctl. It just gives you very brief output. So let's use that now. Okay, it reports that it is active. If you're using a local Linux firewall, then you need to add firewall rules that allow web traffic, such as HTTP traffic and HTTPS traffic. 
On this system, I happen to have the firewall enabled, so I'm going to add rules with the firewall-cmd command. So our first rule will be firewall-cmd. We're going to make it permanent. We're going to place it in the public zone, and then we're going to tell it what service we're going to allow. We're going to allow HTTP traffic. So I'll go ahead and hit enter to add that rule. So now I'm just going to hit the up arrow key to repeat the command and add an S to the end because I also want to allow the secure traffic, the SSL traffic, that we're going to be using to our website as well. And of course that secure traffic is HTTPS traffic. Now that we have the rules added, we can go ahead and reload the firewall. Okay, that makes the firewall read those rules and allow the specified traffic. By the way, if you're not using firewall D and you try to execute one of those firewall-cmd commands, it will just simply report back that firewall D is not running or is not installed. At this point, we're ready to test the web server. So open up a web browser and enter your domain name. As you can see, when I visit my domain of demo.linuxtrainingacademy.com, I see a test page, which means everything is working as expected at this point. The Chrome web browser currently displays a warning for any site that is not using HTTPS. So here it's giving a warning to the user that the connection to the site is not secure. However, at this point, if we try to connect to it over the secure protocol, which is HTTPS, we won't get a response. Let me show you. We get an error that the website is not reachable. That is because Nginx only serves HTTP traffic by default. It needs a few more lines of configuration to serve HTTPS traffic. However, we don't have to do that ourselves because we're going to use a tool that downloads our valid SSL certificate and configures Nginx to use it. That tool is called CertBot. The official CertBot application is distributed as a SNAP package, so we need to install SNAP. However, SNAP is not in the default repository, so we first have to install the Apple repository. Apple stands for Extra Packages for Enterprise Linux, and it's a Fedora project that builds and maintains quality third-party packages for Red Hat Enterprise Linux-based distributions such as Alma Linux. To add the Apple repository to your system, run dnf install-y apple-release. Now that we've added the Apple repository, we can install SnapD, which is the Snap daemon and it's a background service that allows you to manage snaps. Now we need to enable the systemd unit that manages the main snap communication socket by using this command. Classic snap support is required by CertBot, so we enable that functionality by creating a symlink from forward slash snap to var lib snap d snap. We can confirm our symlink with ls-l forward slash snap, and sure enough, we see that it points to var lib snap d snap. Now we can use snap to install certbot. Now we can run the certbot tool. We'll go ahead and use the full path because unless you log out and log back in again, the path is not available yet. So we'll use forward slash snap, forward slash bin, forward slash certbot. And then we're going to provide the web server that we're using, which is dash dash engine X. What this tool will do is get an SSL certificate, configure Nginx for us to use that certificate, and finally set up an auto renewal process so that certificate remains valid. You can go ahead and use your email address here. Agree to the terms of service by hitting Y and pressing enter. You can answer Y to share your email address or N to not share your email address. And I'm going to choose the no option, so I'll hit N and press enter. Now you're being asked for your domain name. Again, I'm going to use demo.linuxtrainingacademy.com, but be sure to use your domain. Now we have successfully installed a Let's Encrypt SSL certificate. Let's test the auto renewal functionality. The dash dash dry run option is used to simulate the renewal process without actually making any changes. All right, we get a message that states all simulated renewal succeeded. So this means that the SSL certificate should be renewed without a problem in the future. By the way, if you would like CertBot to simply download the SSL certificate 
and leave the Nginx configuration up to you, you can use this command. Certbot space cert only space dash dash Nginx. Since Certbot already retrieved a certificate for me and configured Nginx, I'm going to hit control C and not actually run this command. I just wanted to show it to you just in case Certbot doesn't automatically configure Nginx for you or you want to manually do it yourself. Now let's go back to our web browser and visit our domain again. I'll go ahead and refresh the page here for HTTPS demo.linuxtrainingacademy.com. Okay, great. Now the page loads. Let's look at our certificate. Okay, this looks great. There are no warnings or errors from Chrome, and we can view the certificate here in the web browser. I'm going to exit out of this window. And another thing the CertBot tool did for us was configure Nginx to ship any HTTP traffic to HTTPS. So let's test that now. Go to the address bar and remove the S so that it's HTTP colon forward slash forward slash demo dot Linux training academy dot com. When I hit enter, it should redirect me to the secure site. Let's try it. Okay, sure enough, we get our secure site. If it doesn't automatically redirect you here on the first attempt, it could be that the page is cached in your web browser. So you could just uh, open up a new web browser and try it. In this tutorial, you learned how to install an SSL certificate issued by Let's Encrypt on an Alma Linux system running the Nginx web server. You started out by installing the Nginx web server. From there, you added firewall rules to allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic. Next, you installed SnapD and the CertBot application. And finally, you used CertBot to install an SSL certificate, configure Nginx to use that certificate, and set up auto renewal so that your site is never without a valid SSL certificate. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then I know you're going to love all the other videos, tutorials, and courses available for you at linuxtrainingacademy.com. I hope to see you there.